Erev Tov Chavri, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we're going to be reviewing some of the information we reviewed last night. And the reason being is because it's very serious, to say the least, what's going on in the Middle East. I have actually uncovered more documentation that directly links the Vatican's involvement in the Middle East uh, with Syria, the oil smuggling, uh, as well as Ethiopia, the, the events that are transpiring there. It directly links them, or maybe I should say indirectly links them, with the investments that they have in companies that are involved with the things that are happening in the Middle East. So <clears throat> before we get started here, I do have John Stockwell, a video of him. He is a former director of operations for the CIA. He, when he left the CIA, he did write a book about his experiences there, how the United States topples legitimate governments around the world, democratic governments no less, for whatever their agenda may be. We're only going to listen to about uh, one minute of what he says right here. It's very interesting to say the least, but I want you to hear this mainly so you understand that there is a world agenda for toppling normal governments that are operating just fine without the help of the United States or the Vatican or anyone else. Listen to what he says here. Documentation. There's also been direct U.S. military involvement in all of this. U.S. military mining harbors, overflights, underwater demolitions teams going in to blow up things in the ports. There's been assassination of, of religious leaders, teachers, health workers, elected officials, government administrators. CBS, NBC, others have footage of this. Uh, the Americas Watch, the Witness for Peace, we've managed to come up with lists of the names of hundreds and hundreds of leaders who've been assassinated down there. We also have admission of this program by President Ronald Reagan on national television in the debates with Walter Mondale because an assassination manual that we were using to train these people, uh, the Contras with, was brought to the attention of the press and it became a big issue and led to a change, a slight change, in the politics in Congress towards the Contra program. And President Reagan said this was the work of the CIA station chief in Tegucigalpa. And I can assure you the CIA was not appreciative of him, you know, with that particular slip-up. Because one, it attributed, you know, assassinations, a policy. Of, so the media went to the White House the next, uh, the following Monday, and said, did that mean that there had been a change in U.S. policy against assassinations? And the White House playing, you know, double speak said, well, no, not really, because in our opinion, assassination applies to world leaders only when you're killing re religious leaders or regional leaders. Uh, it's not assassination, it's just uh, killing. Terror has been a part of this program. Raw terror, as raw as anything that happens in the Middle East or elsewhere. These Contras have been going into villages. They've been hauling families out. With other mem members of the family forced to watch, they've been castrating fathers, gang raping mothers, slashing off their breasts again while the children are forced to watch. Uh, 22,000 is the figure the New York Times gave. That's just to give you a little insight about what the CIA gets involved in. And it's very sad to say the least, but it's to let you know the U.S. government is very much involved with the overthrow of democratic governments. Even in the case of Ukraine, as we saw, Ukraine it was toppled with the CIA backing the extremist Nazi uh, regime there. And of course, those that were put, in, put into power, like Poroshenko, all Catholic uh, loyalists to the Vatican were put into power in these countries here. Now, let me take you back. As we were looking uh, yesterday, we were looking at the fact that uh, natural gas reserves were discovered in Ethiopia. A pipeline stretching from Ethiopia to Dumbati is under construction. This came out on March the 27, 2015. Of course, this natural uh, gas and all this was discovered long before this. This is just the actual construction of the pipeline. Uh, one of the things that we mentioned in here, this is in uh, Adidas Ababa, which is the capital of Ethiopia. The vast reserves of natural gas recently discovered in Ethiopia drew particular attention in the international companies the construction of a gas pipeline stretching from uh, Arbaminach to Diabuti through Awasa and Dirdawa. Okay. That was to show you what is going on there. Now, we looked, another thing that was very interesting is we were looking at the scriptural 
um, the scriptural side of this. And as we noted in the book of Daniel, chapter 11, you get down to around um, verse 43. It says, He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape, but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and Ethiopians shall be at his steps. Now this is speaking about the Catholic Pope. And the reason we know it's the Pope is because all you have to do is just back up a little bit here. Uh, which is the prince that shall come, by the way. Daniel chapter 9 verse 26 speaks about uh, that the, this is how we know who destroyed the second temple in Jerusalem. It says, that the, uh, the prince that shall come will be of the people that destroy, destroyed the temple and the sanctuary, which was Titus, the Roman general. The book of Obadiah also indicts Edom, or Esau in this case, as the one that stood aloof while your brother was destroyed his temple and looted and, and carried away his treasures from, from his house. Again, Titus, the Roman general, identified by Obadiah as Esau, the descendants of Edom. And God said he would bring about judgment on Edom because of the evils that they did. And again, Pope Francis fulfilling biblical prophecy back in uh, uh, 2014 of Passover while he drank uh, a communion service in the upper room above King David's tomb, where it says in the biblical passage in Obadiah chapter 1, only one chapter, verse 16, they shall drink upon my holy mountain. See, and it's in the plural masculine, men only, and they shall continue. They shall swallow down. Let me actually quote this correctly for you so we don't make any mistakes in this. He says, For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. Of course, the holy mountain is in verse 17, But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. The masculine plural identified that it was Pope Francis and his delegation, the men only, that actually drank there in the communion service when he was there in 2014 of Passover. The following weeks, as they continued to do communion service, the Catholic Church and their members that came there was an international delegation of people that would come, both male and female, which it is gender inclusive in the plural, that says, and the Gentiles shall continually drink. So for my Jewish brethren that thinks that the scripture applies to the Jews, it's not true. It's the Gentiles that actually do the drinking upon the holy mountain. So we see that the, the Pope of Rome has very much uh, built up his case here. Verse 36 of Daniel 11, it says here, The king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself, magnify himself above every god, and shall speak strange things against the god of gods, and he shall uh, prosper till the indignation be accomplished for that which is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the god of his fathers, and neither the desire, desire of women, nor any god shall he regard, for he shall magnify himself above all. Now you might wonder, how could the Pope be a king? Well, did not Israel take an official seat at the tomb of David for Pope Benedict, officially making the Pope of Rome or any Pope of Rome that succeeds him to be the king of Israel? They've actually set it up. And as we saw, and we'll run real quick back up to this in verse 14 here, and in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also the children of the violent among thy people shall lift themselves up to establish the vision, but they shall stumble. In the Hebrew language, when you actually read this last part of the verse here, also the children of the violent among thy people, it literally is the sons of the lawless ones among your people. Amcha your people, speaking of Daniel, the Jews that would try to literally inashu, marry the vision. They're trying to bring a marriage together. Do you not realize that's exactly what Ahab did? Ahab went and married Jezebel and brought idolatry into Israel. And what is happening here? Again, the sons of the lawless ones in Israel, such as Shimon Perez, and Prime Minister Netanyahu, these are the sons of the lawless ones, and they're trying to marry in the vision. See, 
They want to see the fulfillment of the word of God that says Jerusalem shall be a city for all nations. And so they, they did what? They went and married Rome and they brought idolatry into Israel, trying to fulfill the vision by marrying Rome back in again. Well, all you did was reset up where it was when Jesus left the scene 2,000 years ago. Rome was in control then, and now Rome is back in control again. And yes, you've anointed him to be the king of Israel now by giving him the official seat at David's tomb. You handed over that land to him. So yes, he is a king. And he also does not like to get married. It's one of the Catholic sayings, you're not allowed to marry, unlike what Jesus taught in the humane gospel, where he, he the, when you speak about the, uh, the community in Qumran, there were those that were not married by choice and those that were married. See, you could be either one in the community of Qumran. All right, so, but in his place shall he honor the God of strongholds. Now, some people said it's the God of, of violence and war. Well, nonetheless, he does because what does he do? He uses the United States, NATO, their allies there to conduct his war campaigns around the Middle East and all over the world. For what? For his filthy greed of money. And that's what the Vatican does. And you're going to find out that's why the war in the Middle East, it's why the, the problems are going on in Ethiopia now. It's because the Vatican owns the stock in the companies that are there right now. This is why they're in bed with the World Bank. Everything that's going on, it's amazing to say the least. So uh, we, we find out right here, he doesn't, uh, no not shall he honor with the gold, excuse me, and a God whom his fathers knew not, speaking of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or in this case here, he may claim to have Peter as his forefather, the apostles. Well, they certainly did, certainly did not believe the way he believes by no means, but he does not, uh, and a God whom his fathers knew not, shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and costly things. Like I said in the Vatican, they have a, a, a mural of Mary over on the wall, the Virgin Mary, with seven huge diamonds around her head. Huge, costly stones. Not to mention the billions. There's over, I think it was $500 billion in gold that the Vatican owns in vaults and places around the world. Not to mention all the gold they have in Vatican City. And he shall deal with the strongest fortress with the help of a foreign god whom he shall acknowledge and shall increase glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for a price. And he shall deal with the strongest fortress with the help of a foreign god? That's where he works with the Arabic world. The Muslim race there, where he, the, the very religion he created, the Allah, as you would say his name by the Arabic people, which is not God, it's only the devil. And no, he's not Akbar either. He is not greater. He is much less. It is the same as the Mithras God. It is the same God that they served during the time when, when um, uh, in Persia, when the different kings there, Cyrus and Darius, they were actually worshiping Molech, the God of their fathers, which happens to be on the Cyrus cylinder, in case those that do not know it. Um, Verse 40, and at a time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots. The king of the south is going to push at him? Could that be one of these Arabic nations such as Saudi Arabia that pushes at the Vatican? You know, there's a lot of threats by ISIS there that they want to destroy the Vatican. And what does he do? He sends in that army there his, of his king of the north like a whirlwind with chariots, with horsemen, and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow as he passes through. NATO's got a lot of forces there now, and they've been justifying it, especially after the Paris bombings there, which no doubt they created themselves in order to make it look good. He shall enter also into the beauteous land, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall be delivered out of his hand, Edom and Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. Ammon happens to be modern-day Syria. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries in the land of Egypt, shall not escape, but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver, over the precious things of Egypt, and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps." which is exactly what's happening now. All right, so you're, you see where you are in biblical prophecy, but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall frighten him. Not the king of the north. He's talking about Russia. 
See, the king of the north is actually the United States and NATO's allies. But the north, there's tidings that bother him out of the north and east. That's Russia and China. They have frightened him. And he shall go forth with great fury to destroy, not only to take away many, and shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and the beauteous holy mountain, which is going to be there in Israel. He's going to set up that third temple, but it's not going to be God's temple. It's going to be the Pope's temple. And he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. Now let's take a look at some of the things that are going on. Again, as we go back into the documentation of what we were looking at, many things are going on. Uh, this was the other article we looked at. Men prayed in the uh, Aromia region outside Adidas Ababa. Uh, this was a photograph by Reuters here where they're, they're actually there protesting there. At least 10 students are said to have been killed and hundreds injured during the protest against Ethiopian government's plan to expand the capital city into the surrounding farmland. According to the Human Rights Watch, the students were killed this week when security forces used excessive force and live ammunition to disperse the crowds. Again, Adidas Ababa in the capital of Ethiopia. Now, why are they doing this? because they discovered gas, natural gas and oil in Ethiopia. Just like what's going on in Syria, the overthrow of the government there. They want to seize those oil fields there. They want to take control of it. You don't think the Vatican doesn't have an interest in all of this? Sure the Vatican does. Why would the Vatican have such a great interest in this? Well, all right, let's take real quick and see why the Vatican has such an interest in this region. And this is in an article on Now the End Begins. Pope Francis fails to mention the Vatican billions as he gives a speech denouncing health. Very interesting, isn't it, that he just ignores all that. He wants to help the poor, but he forgets about all the money that he actually has there. Uh, and this, I'm going to blow this up where you guys can see this because I want you to be able to see what the Pope actually has here. Uh, it, says, it says, alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls from Revelation 18.6. The Vatican has large investments with the Rothschilds of Britain, France and America. With Hambrose Bank, with the Credit Suez in London and Zurich in the United States, it has its largest investments with the Morgan Bank and the Chase Manhattan Bank, the First National Bank of New York, the Bankers Trust Companies, and others. The Vatican has billions of shares in the most powerful international corporations such as Gulf Oil and Shell, General Motors, Bethlehem Steel, General Electric. But the Gulf Oil and Shell is the one that I wanted to bring your attention to because Gulf Oil and right here in the article that we're going to look at real quick here, all we want to do is we want to make a little connection right here. Gulf Oil has now, in partnership with Canamount Petroleum LP, and it's also called Gulf Oil International, is who they are now. All right, now, it's also, um, another one here is Shell. It says here, and we'll make this a little bigger for you as well. We want to make sure you guys see this real well. This is an article here uh, that we were looking at as well. This is on Bloomberg Business. So you know it's a nice, reputable company. Oil and gas consumable fuels. Company overview of Royal Dutch Shell PLC subsidiary, subs subsidiaries uh, in Sudan, Djibouti, and Ethiopia. What do you know? Shell Company, the Vatican-owned stock, Billions of dollars in stock with this company here happens to just so be in Ethiopia. What a strange thing. Royal Dutch Shell PLC subsidiaries in Sudan and Ethiopia represents the combined operation of Shell Diabuti SA, Shell Ethiopia Limited, and the Shell Company of the Sudan LTD and their sale to the Libya Oil Holdings Limited as of July 10th of 2008. Royal Dutch Shell uh, PLC subsidiaries in Sudan. Uh, the Abuti and Ethiopia was acquired by the Libya Oil Holdings Limited. All right, so see, this is the link that the Vatican has there because they have these agreements with Shell and Shell Oil. So and when we go back and we look, and there's this discovery of this natural gas in Ethiopia and these different companies that are involved in bringing this out, this is why the Vatican has a very important interest about what goes on there. Another one right here, the Shell Oil Company, International Direct Companies Histories Copyright. Uh, they're out of Houston, Texas there. 
wholly uh, owned subsidiary of Royal Dutch Shell. And there again, let's make this big enough so you guys can see it. We'll also post these on our, on our in, uh, Facebook uh, page there as well. And uh, it's wholly owned subsidiary of Royal Dutch Shell Petroleum Incorporated. So you can see who the who the owners are of this. They have over 12,000 employees and they have uh, sales of over 19.2 billion. They do uh, crude petroleum and natural gas extractions. So now you know why they're in Ethiopia as well. And then we have another one here. This is a Bloomberg as well. It says Ethiopia and Dubai signed an agreement a 1.55 billion fuel pipeline with developers, mining oil and gas services, and Blackstone Group LP back Black Reno Group. Well, by the way, Shell and the uh, this group here called the Blackstone are in bed together and married up just as much as they can be in many ventures all over the world. They work together, Blackstone and the Shell group together. Again, who's the one doing the pipeline from Ethiopia out of this region here? It is the Blackstone Group, LP, which is also united and married up with Shell uh, Oil International. Again, this is why the Pope has such a major interest in what goes on in these companies here. So let me take a, let's take a look at a particular scripture here that I pulled up. This is what came to my heart last night that, is, that made me want to come back and look at this all again. And uh, if you look at your King James Bible in the book of John, um, let me just make sure where we're at. John chapter 12, starting with verse 1, says, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany with Lazarus, was which one had been dead, who he had raised from the dead. There made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikener, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? That sounds like Pope Francis, doesn't it? We need to share the wealth with the world. We need to go out here and, and help these poor people. Those ones that are coming into America, the illegal refugees, help them out. The ones coming into Europe from Africa, Libya, the countries like Ethiopia, uh, all these other countries here, help them out, guys. Bring them on in and give them a place to stay. What about those coming in from Syria? The Muslim, the refugees out of Syria. The Pope wants you to help them out. Give them a place to stay. Well, that's what he sounds like, like he really cares for the poor. But because he was a thief, Jesus, the Bible says, and had the bag and bear what was put therein, in other words, he held the bag, the money bag, didn't that sound a lot like what we just read over here? Uh, verse 43 of Daniel 11, But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all precious things of Egypt. See, the Pope of Rome holds that money bag, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And he says, uh, and it says here, uh, and, and, um, and given to the poor, this because he said he cared not for the poor. Uh, this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. See, he didn't care for the poor. He was a thief. And that's what the Pope of Rome is, a thief. That's what the Vatican is, a thief. All right, then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my bearing hath she kept this, for the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. So we see that the Vatican claims to be caring about all this. In fact, let's take a look at what the Vatican says in their own news broadcast. They said in here on the news of the Vatican news here, Africa, Ethiopia, emergency in Ethiopia for tens of thousands of South Sudanese refugees, Adidas Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia. There are between 72,000 and 100,000 South Sudanese refugees who have fled to the western Ethiopian region um, of Gambela, according to the estimates by some humanitarian organizations. That's the ones that they have that can falsify the information operating in the area of clashes between government soldiers and rebels loyal to the former South Sudanese vice president, Rick Machar. Now that was pretty clever of the Vatican to be able to make, to automatically find a reason why this was all going on. 
And they say it's because these are clashes between the soldiers there. But according to this article right here, it says here that they're, that they're actually fighting and protesting. At least 10 of them were actually killed because why? They're wanting to take away the land from the Ethiopian, plans to expand the capital city into the surrounding farmlands. This isn't because of people that were formerly loyal to some other uh, uh, Ethiopian president. This is because why the Ethiopian government is taking their lands away from them. Just like they did in Syria. Just we saw in Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7 clearly says that that land would become desolate because of the people themselves. Why? The United States, as we saw John Stockwell say just a little bit ago, they, they go in there and they topple these governments. And they do all kinds of heinous crimes. They, he was talking about castration, cutting women's breasts off and making the children watch. Now they behead everybody in the Middle East. Thank you, CIA, for helping arm up uh, ISIS and ISIL out there and get them going there and arm the rebel groups fighting against Assad. But you know what? You're not going to take Syria because Russia's there, and that's what's concerning the Pope right now. You got Russia there, and that's a major problem for you, isn't it? So the article here differs with the Vatican of what this has really happened. It says the students were protesting against a controversial proposal known as the master plan to expand Adidas Ababa into surrounding Oromoya state, which they say will threaten local farmers with mass evictions. According to the Ethiopian constitution, Ormia is one of the nine politically autonomous regional states in the country and the region's Oromo people make up a largest ethnic group in Ethiopia. However, rights of groups, says Ormoro, have been systematically marginalized and persecuted for the last 24 years. By some estimates, there were as many as 20,000 Ormoro political prisoners in Ethiopia as of March of 2014. Well, I'm sorry, did that get in the way of Shell Oil's uh, big deal there to help get the gas out of there? I guess the Vatican wasn't going to suffer any losses, were they? No, I don't think they were. Vatican's not interested in making losses. Now we have another article that just comes out as well. This one here, December the 11th. Right there in Adidas Ababa, a hand grenade attack on Friday at the Ethiopian's biggest mosque in the capital. Adidas Ababa has wounded 24 people, police told Sudan Tribune. Well, what do you know? The CIA is at work again. What are they going to do? They're going to cause the Muslims to have an uprising there to go against the different groups and start killing everybody. Great job there. Vatican keeps using their military arm and might all over the world. Why? For, for nothing but filthy money. The attack comes university. Students from across Oromia region continue protests over federal government's integrated development plan aimed to expand the capital of Adidas Ababa to parts of Ormia, Ethiopia's most populous region. You know, the Vatican's been doing this for a long time, friends. Let me just show you just how long they've been doing it. All right, I want you to get a good idea. This here is un, uh, was written by Ron Frazier. He's a columnist for The Trumpet. This here is Pope Pius XII. And Pope Pius XII, back during the Second World War, the Vatican's butcher of Ethiopia, Hitler's Pope, is what the article is entitled. The Vatican's historical ties with the fascist states rise to the surface yet again. Memories of the Vatican's historic connection with and support of the fascist causes and personalities, British political economist Rodney Atkinson alerted us to the following release by the Global Alliance for Justice. The Ethiopian cause condemns in the strongest terms the Italian government's construction of an official memorial to, con to the convicted war criminal Field Marshal Rodolfo Graziani. This was done on August the 18th. Why are Ethiopians so incensed at the Italian government honoring one of their country's wartime field marshals in this manner? The reason for the indignation is morally legitimate as it is condemnation of all the perpetrators of fascist and Nazi horrors during World War II. During the Italian War, on Ethiopia, 1936 to 1941, Italy carried out systematically mass extermination campaign in Ethiopia with poison gas sprayed from airplanes and other horrific, 
horrific atrocities that claimed the lives of no less than one million Ethiopian women, men, women, children, including 30,000 massacred only three days in Adidas Ababa, as well as the reprisal killings of the entire monastery Monastic community at the historic Debre Libanos Monastery. In addition, 2,000 churches and 525,000 homes were destroyed by the Italian fascists. These atrocities were carried out under the direct command of Grazani, known as the Butcher of Ethiopia. Grazani remained loyal to Mussolini until 1945 and served as the Minister of Defense in the puppet Italian Republic in Northern Italy and committed additional war crimes in North Africa. But what is the moral reprehensible about this effort to memorialize an Italian criminal as a war hero is that the moral arbiter of Italian society and of one billion followers globally has been fit to endorse it. The Catholic Church themselves sent their own representatives, sent their own representatives there while this was being constructed in Italy to honor this man. Did they forget about their own 2,000 churches that were destroyed? Did they forget about the 30,000 Christians that were, that were murdered, along with the one million Ethiopians? No, they didn't care. Now the Italian government has honored him with a mausoleum and a memorial park built at taxpayers' expense in a village south of Rome. A Vatican representative attended the recent opening ceremony of the Graziana Memorial. The presence of the Vatican's representatives at the dedication of the Grazina Memorial is a Atkinson point out consistent with the Vatican's historic linkage with fascists. With the fascists, there is nothing new about the stronghold or political historical ties between the fascist states and the Vatican. The link has been carried far into the post-Second World War era by the Vatican's support of the blatantly fascist state of Croatia. All right. Now also you have a few days prior to this release, two prime organs... Uh, of the Catholic media gave prominence to the latest efforts to, wh to whitewash wartime Pope P uh, Pius XII, despite the overwhelming evidence of Pope Pius XII's comp compromising hand in the relation to Nazism, in particular the Hitler's final solution for the Jews. Pope Benedict XVI is treading a steady course toward the beautification of Pope Pius XII. So their hands are always dirty, especially with Ethiopia. The dirtiest hands you can possibly get. Now, we showed you what the Vatican had to say about this. Now, I want to take you here. This is how the World Bank broke its promise to protect the poor. This was an article that was released. There are many involved in this. The Huffington Post uh, involved in this. Uh, there was over 50 journalists involved in this uh, particular writing of this article here. And the reason why I bring this up is because the Vatican is married in with the World Bank. Now, before we hit the article, let me just show you the connection of the Vatican with the World Bank, what just happened weeks ago. Weeks ago, we have a very interesting thing that took place. Hang on. Get it right here. Vatican World Bank partners to launch Year of Mercy with St. Peter's Climate Change Light Show. Rome, December 4th, 2015. The Catholic Church founded to shed the light of Christ on the world has quite literally invited the world to shed its light on her. On December the 8th, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, as well as opening the extraordinary Jubilee of Mercy, Pope Francis allowed climate change partisans and population control advocates to project a light show in the facade of Cupola of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. The most important church in the Catholic world, so as to inspire change around the climate crisis. The show, titled Illuminating Our Common Home, will project onto St. Peter's images our shared natural world in order to educate and inspire change around the climate crisis. Across generational cultures, languages, religions, and classes, states a press release about the event put on by one of the sponsors. Now, they were very big into this. One of those sponsors is the World Bank. The World Bank is also very heavily involved with the Vatican. And of course, it's the World Bank that is loaning all this mega millions to companies like that want to do the oil and stuff in Ethiopia. In fact, the World Bank is the big money lender to the projects going on in Ethiopia right now. That the Vatican, who owns a great deal of stock in shell oil and Gulf Oil International that's working there to build the pipeline shell uh, of Ethiopia, as we pointed out to you in several of these articles already. This is exactly what they're doing, Ethiopia. See? Um, 
Royal Dutch Shell Corporation. All these companies here involved directly in Ethiopia. Blackstone has the very ties with Ethiopia. And this is what the Catholic Church is doing. They're deeply involved in all of this right here. So they're there and the World Bank is backing them in all this. And then we wonder why. We wonder why. Now, I didn't. I don't know if I read this to you guys yesterday. This is from the Humane Gospel of Jesus, one of the lost gospels. This is in relation to Matthew chapter 24, where Jesus speaks of here. But this is the way it was worded before uh, they made changes to the Bible by by Constantine, the, the the wonderful Roman emperor there that the Catholic Church was founded with. For many things shall they take place upon the earth that has not taken place before, nor ever seen by any generation except those of that generation. For you shall hear of great wars and also much talk of war. Just like Matthew 24, 6 says. Wars and rumors of wars. And many will be, the th be threatened with destruction. But be you not troubled, for many things must come to pass, yet before the end of all evil things. And in those days, alas, before the great rest, those that have power, like the Vatican, like NATO, shall gather to themselves in greed the lands and the riches of the earth for their own lust, and thus shall oppress the greater number who have not, like the Ethiopians, like the people in Syria, who have been dispersed by the millions now living in Europe, in the United States, in Turkey, in Saudi Arabia, without a home, living in tents, living out of cars, and everything else. Why? Because all these interesting oil company, companies, and by the way, uh, Gulf Oil, which the Vatican owns a lot of money in there, is also down there in Dubai. They have a great big facility in Dubai, in the Middle East there. But anyway, it says that they will, for their... Uh, uh, the lands and the riches of the earth, they'll gather to themselves to, uh, in greed the lands and the riches of the earth for their own lusts, and thus shall oppress the greater number who have not. For in those days the many shall be held in bondage, but yet not in prison, and they shall be used to increase the riches of the greedy. Isn't that what we see happening right now? <laughs> exactly. So he fails to mention to you not only the billions that he has, but all the money and the companies that, that he has invested, the Vatican has invested there that is involved in all the things that are going on in the Middle East. And this is why we see, as this article here I'm fixing to go back to you and share again, how the World Bank broke its promise to protect the poor. Beneath the gloomy white sky, more than 100 armed police poured into the slum of Badai, east of the teeming majesty of Lagos, Nigeria. As they advanced, they cracked their batons on the unpaved streets against the ramshackled walls of the shanties. If you love your life, move out, the officers shouted. Thousands of people grabbed what belongings they could carry and fled. Then a line of hulking excavators moved in, using their hydraulic claws to match, smash homes and pieces. Within hours, the neighborhood was a ruin. The Lagos state government flattened Badai East February of 2013 to clear the land into the urban renewal zone financed by the World Bank. The global lender committed to fighting poverty. That's the bank that just did this great big show there. They were the sponsor of this lighting show there at the Vatican. Interesting, isn't it? The neighborhood's poor residents were cast out without warning compensation and left to fend for themselves in a crowded, dangerous city. Evictions like the one in Badai East aren't suppo supposed to happen in the middle of projects backed by the World Bank. For more than three decades, the lenders has maintained a set of safeguard policies that it claims have brought about a more humane dem democratic system of economic development. Governments that borrowed money from the bank can't force people from their homes without warning. Families evicted to make ways for, for dams, power plants, or other big projects must be resettled and their livelihoods restored. That's kind of the way the Pope talks, but that's not what they do. They give a warning. They went in there and beat the sticks on the ground and said, get the heck out or else, if you love your lives. The key findings of these 50 journalists said over, over last decade, projects funded by the World Bank have physically or economically displaced an estimated of 3.4 million people. 
taking their land or damaging their livelihoods. The World Bank has regularly failed to live up to its own policies for protecting people harmed by projects that finances the World Bank and its private sector lending arm. The International Finance Corp have financed governments and companies accused of human rights violations such as rape, murder, and torture. That's what the CIA does too. We just saw what John Stockwell said. They did gang rapes, murders. Mm. In some cases, the lenders have continued to bankroll these borrows after the evidence of abuse has emerged. Sure they do. Ethiopian authorities diverted millions of dollars from a World Bank supporter project to fund a violent campaign of mass evictions, according to the former officials who carried out the forest resettlement program. Oh, Mr. Pope, I'm sorry, I forgot. It's your company there, Shell Oil International, there working there to get this pipeline with their great big partner to be built. I guess they got in the way. Or maybe you need around, uh, you need around the city there, you gotta be able to build some nice big office buildings for all these oil companies. I don't know what the case is. From 2009 to 2013, World Bank Group lenders pumped $50 billion into projects graded the highest risk for irreversible and unprecedented social environmental impacts, more than twice as much as the previous five-year span. They're in a hurry now. They are definitely in a hurry. So Mr. John, Jim Young Kim, who was actually there talking with the Pope recently about how great they're doing and helping to, to, to deal with this global climate change, which by the way, Putin says is nothing but a geostrategic uh, geo way of war, is what it is. And he calls it a fraud. But he says here, we took a hard look at ourselves on resettlement and what we found caused me deep concern, says Mr. Jim Young Kim. The World Bank's president is what he said in a statement when they were interviewing him. So what did you do? Instead of cleaning up his act, he runs to the Pope and says, we're doing great work, Mr. Pope Francis. We're making sure your oil companies that you have all these billions invested in, that you're able to get your stuff built. We made sure that we loan the money to the right groups that are ran by the CIA that can help, you know, get rid of the problem. Interviewed hundred, they, um, so this is, this is what they're doing. This is why I say, Pope Francis is doing the exact same thing. The exact same thing that Judas did. There's no difference. And it's all going to come to an end very soon. It's the same thing that's going on in the middle of Europe. Excuse me, not Europe, but in the middle of the Middle East. That's why he's got all of his warlords there. They've run in there, and they're going to overthrow it. I'm Stephen Benu with Israeli News Live, another prophetic update. As we have seen here, Pope Francis is a lot like Judas. He's holding the money bag, claims that he cares for the poor, but he really doesn't. Shalom and good evening.